We have arrived at the semi-final match in the Western New England Candle Pin Association Pro Tour event here at Canal Lane in Southampton, Massachusetts. On lane 12 you see the number 2 seed, Corey Packard, warming up for this match. He's going to be facing Rich Myrick, who has defeated Brian Mayer and Ed Tringali so far in the first two rounds of match play. The winner of this match will take on the top seed, Gary Santora. Corey Packard qualified with a 651 in the five string qualifying round. And he starts off with a nine drop. And Rich Myrick starts off with a strike. Pretty solid shot right there, a hammer, one two pocket. And we will take a close look at it in slow motion and that's not much doubt about that and Rich likes to start off these matches with strikes as you'll recall from uh, a couple of years ago when he started a match against Charlie Jutras with a four bagger and then if I recall the next month he uh, started off a match with three strikes in a row so Rich likes to get get out of the gate pretty quickly but Corey Packard is uh, not intimidated by that, he picks that spare and drops eight on it. Rich Myrick stays on the head pin but punches through the middle leaving a uh, a big five, two, three, four, six, ten. See if Corey Packard can convert this three, six, two pinner. He's got it, that's two marks in a row to start off for Corey Packard. Rich Myrick puts eight on the strike, and he'll have a nine in the second box. That'll give him 27 through two. Corey Packard is from the central Massachusetts area. And there is a solid one-two pocket hit by Rich Myrick again, but this time the eight pin does not go. Uh, nine drop. Corey Packard with a six, and he's got a tricky leave there. Four, six, seven, eight. Piece of wood that he might be able to use to, to uh, convert. And there's a great shot. We'll take a look at that in just a moment as Rich Myrick converts the eight pin for a spare. So both guys are off to a pretty quick start. You'll see Corey Packard plays this perfectly. He just clips the end of that wood kicks it off the wall and while the ball is taking out the 478 triangle that wood goes over and takes a six pin so that's three spares in a row to start off for Corey Packard he's uh, he's on fire in the early going here and he's right on the head pin in the fourth box with a seven drop leaving a 356 triangle Rich Myrick with a I think that's a five drop Four horsemen right side plus the seven pin. Corey Packard, I think, bowls out of Colonial in Worcester. Or it might be Bogey Lane in Eastbrook, I'm not quite sure. And there is another spare by Corey Packard. That's four in a row. Rich Myrick. Misses the head pin to the left, so he's going to want to uh, get every stick off the deck if he can. Doesn't want to let Corey get too far ahead, and he'll have a nine box in the fourth. Which Myrick, as I mentioned, bowls right here at Canal Lane, so this is a home game for him. And another nice ball by Corey Packer. Once again, a spare leave. He's got a triangle and a chance to make his fifth consecutive spare. That's a two, uh, two, four, five triangle. Not quite, he goes by the two pin, just takes out the four. So he'll, he'll be open for the first time <clears throat> after starting off with four spares in a row. But he'll have a pretty good lead at the end of the first half. Nine for Corey and a ten 
for Rich. So we will take a look at the scoreboard. And you can see that's a 77 half for Corey Packard. And Rich Myrick not doing badly with a six, uh, 61, but he finds himself 16 pins down. As he goes over to lane 12 and Corey will finish on lane 11. Being the higher seed, he had the choice of lane. Most bowlers will prefer to finish on the left lane. because that allows them to see what the other bowler has done before they finish. Sometimes that makes a difference on how aggressively you might play a shot. And Corey kind of throws a pitch out there. He kind of drops the ball. As I mentioned before, in the earlier matches, there was a, uh, there was a lot of lane conditioner on, on the pin deck that canal lanes today and a lot of guys have been having trouble hanging on to the ball and you saw that right there and again Corey uh, dropped the ball you can see set it down way before the foul line and it bounced it was uh, a skip lob and, uh, and he missed the target altogether really it, you can see he's wiping down the ball he's trying to get the uh, conditioner off the off the ball so that he can get a better grip on it. Let's see how, how he does. He needs an out here. But only three pins. And he's got a seven. And well he'll take it at that point. Let's have another look at exactly what's going on here with this. We'll take it in slow motion and you'll see how early the ball slips out of Corey Packard's hand. You can see it bounces and you saw it bounce over the uh, out over the lob line because he wasn't able to hang on to the ball. And here's the second ball, and exactly the same thing happens. Slips out of his hand, and uh, and you can see the result. It's, it's uh, wide right, really having a, a hard time hanging on to the ball. Third ball he was able to recover and hit the target. Rich Myrick punches out a half whisker in the seven box. See if Corey Packard can get it back together and uh, hit the target. And he does. A nice ball by Corey on the head pin. And Rich Myrick almost converts that half whistle. He gets everything but the five. Put the ball in the in the one two pocket, playing it on the uh, on the inside. It looked like Corey had trouble hanging. That, that one seemed to release pretty early, too. And as you could see, again, he missed his target to the right. And he's wiping the balls down. There's a lot of uh, slick stuff on the ball. And he's trying to, trying to get it off so that he can have a, uh, some more ball control. It's really... Uh, That's a significant issue in, in, in our sport at a lot of tournaments. So a lot of the houses treat the pin deck with, uh, with some very slippery stuff to try and make the pins fall down more easily. And not to editorialize, but I really do not understand why they do that. It's completely unnecessary. These guys are the best bowlers in the game, and they, they don't need any help knocking the pins down. And in the... Uh, in this particular event at Canal Lanes, the, uh, it was really interesting to note the scoring pattern in qualifying. Um, in the, uh, the first string of qualifying, the field averaged about 119. And by the third string, the uh, field was averaging 115. And I think a lot of that was due to guys having trouble hanging onto the ball. And in the fifth string of qualifying, the field average was all the way down to 111. Can't really blame all of that on the lane conditioner, but I think it was it was a major factor. In any case, end of sermon. Rich Myrick has a uh, has an eight box. Corey Packard with a ten. Strike by Rich Myrick. 
great shot. Let's have a uh, have a look in slow motion. One two pocket hit, and the six pin is is tripped out. But oddly enough, it's a pin coming off the left side wall that comes over to trip the six. So that's a very timely strike by Rich Myrick in the ninth frame. He's going to need a, a big fill and another mark. Because despite the uh, struggling second half that Corey Packard has had, he still maintains the lead. So Rich is going to need another mark in the 10th. Corey with with a six drop and then uh, going at the two, four, five, seven, he missed to the left as you saw and just took out the four. So he'll be trying to maximize the pin count, fill out the frame if at all possible here. And it'll be an eight. Very important fill by Rich Myrick. He misses the head pin. He really wanted to uh, get a spare leave out of that. But instead he misses the head pin, drops five, and he's got the one, two, four, seven, nine. Otherwise known as the Kaleri. Corey Packard with a four drop on the left side. Rich needs this spare. And he doesn't get it. He hits the head pin, but just dead center and pushes it straight back. So that is going to uh, give him a six on the strike. And that's going to gonna mean that Corey Packard is going to move on. And Corey makes this there. He didn't need it, but he will move on to the final match against Gary Santora. Rich Myrick congratulates him. Rich had a good run, three matches, and he'll finish third. Pick up a pretty good check for a third place finish. So Corey Packard will finish up the fill and then we'll give you the scores and Corey Packard will win this match and move on to the finals against Gary Santora. Corey finishes with a 124 against the 113 by Rich Myrick.